Namaste, Dhanavat Pranams, by the instruction and grace of our spiritual master, Om Vishnu Pad Paramahamsa Sri Pad Bhakti Madhava Puri Maharaj. We are here reading Srimad Bhagavatam, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. <clears throat> Canto 2, The Cosmic Manifestation, Chapter 5, Text 23. Mahatastu vikur vanad, rajasat vo pabremitat, tama pradhanas tvabhavad, dravyagyana kriyatmaka. Material activities are caused by the mahatattvas being agitated. At first, there is transformation of the modes of goodness and passion, and later, due to the mode of ignorance, matter its knowledge and different activities of material knowledge come into play. Purport. Material creations of every description are more or less due to the development of the mode of passion, rajas. The Mahatattva is the principle of the material creation. Uh, and when it is agitated by the will of the Supreme, at first the modes of passion and goodness are prominent. And afterwards, the mode of passion being generated in due course by material activities of different varieties becomes prominent, and the living entities are thus involved more and more in ignorance. Brahma is the representation of the mode of passion, and Vishnu is the representation of the mode of goodness. <clears throat> While the mode of ignorance is represented by Lord Shiva, the father of all material activities. Material nature is called the mother, and the initiator for material, uh, materialistic life is the father, Lord Shiva. All material creation by the living entities is therefore initiated by the mode of passion. With the advancement of the duration of life in a particular millennium, the different modes act by gradual development. In the... <clears throat> in this age of Kali, <clears throat> when the mode of passion is most prominent, material activities of different varieties in the name of advancement of human civilization take place, and the living entities become more and more involved in forgetting their real identity, their spiritual nature. By a slight cultivation of the mode of goodness, a glimpse of spiritual nature is perceived, but due to the prominence of the mode of passion, the mode of goodness becomes adulterated. Therefore, one cannot transcend the limits of the material modes, and therefore realization of the Lord, who is always transcendental to the modes of material nature, becomes very difficult for the living entities, even though prominently situated in the mode of goodness through cultivation of the various methods. In other words, the gross matters are aributam, uh, their maintenance is Adidaivam, and the initiator of material activities is Adiyatmam. In the material world, these three principles act as prominent features, namely as raw material, its regular supplies, and its use in different varieties of material creations for sense enjoyment by the bewildered entities. Text 24. So hankara iti prokto vikur van sambutri daha vaikari kas tajashascha tamas cheti yadvida dravya shakti kriya shaktir jnana shaktir iti prabho. The self centered materialistic ego, thus being transformed into three features becomes known as the modes of goodness, passion, and ignorance in three divisions, namely the powers that evolve matter, knowledge of material creations, and the intelligence that guides such materialistic activities. Narada, you are quite competent to understand this. Purport. Materialistic ego, or the sense of identification with matter, is grossly self-centered, devoid of clear knowledge of the existence of God. And this self-centered egoism of the materialistic living entities is the cause of their being conditioned by other paraphernalia and continuing their bondage of material existence. In the Bhagavad Gita, 
This self-centered egoism is very nicely explained in the seventh chapter, verses 24 through 27. The self-centered impersonalist, without a clear conception of the personality of Godhead, concludes in his own way that the personality of Godhead takes a material shape from his original impersonal spiritual existence for a particular mission. And this misleading conception of the Supreme Lord by the self-centered impersonalist continues, even though he is seen to be very interested in the Vedic literatures, such as the Brahma Sutras and other highly intellectual sources of knowledge. This ignorance of the personal feature of the Lord is due to simply uh, the ignorance of the mixture of the different modes. The impersonalist thus cannot conceive of the Lord's eternal spiritual form of eternal knowledge, bliss, and existence. The reason is that the Lord reserves the right of not exposing himself to the non-devotee, who, even after a thorough study of literature like the Bhagavad Gita, remains an impersonalist simply by obstinacy. This obstinacy is due to the action of Yogamaya, a personal energy of the Lord that acts like an aide de camp in covering the vision of the obstinate impersonalist. Such a bewildered human being is described as mudha or grossly ignorant because he is unable to understand the transcendental form of the Lord as being unborn and unchangeable. If the Lord takes a form or material shape from his original impersonal feature, then it means that he is born and changeable from impersonal to personal. But he is not changeable, nor does he ever take a new birth like a conditioned soul. The conditioned soul may take a form birth after birth due to his conditional existence in matter, but the self-centered impersonalists, by their gross ignorance, accept the Lord as one of them because of their self-centered egoism, even after so-called advancement of knowledge in the Vedanta. The Lord, being situated in the heart of every individual living entity, knows very well the tendency of such conditioned souls in terms of past, present, and future. But the bewildered conditioned soul hardly can know him in his eternal form. By the will of the Lord, therefore, the impersonalist, even after knowing the Brahman and Paramatma features of the Lord, remains ignorant of his eternal personal feature as ever-existent Narayan, transcendental to all material creation. The cause of such gross ignorance is constant engagement by the materialistic man in the matter of artificially increasing material demands. To realize the Supreme Personality of Godhead, one has to purify the materialistic senses by devotional service. The mode of goodness or the Brahminical culture recommended in the Vedic literatures is helpful to such spiritual realization, and thus the Gyan Shakti stage of the conditioned soul is comparatively better than the other two stages, namely Dravya Shakti and Kriya Shakti. The whole material civilization is manifested by a huge accumulation of materials, or in other words, raw materials for industrial purposes, and the industrial enterprises, Kriya Shakti, are all due to gross ignorance of spiritual life. In order to rectify this great anomaly of materialistic civilization, based on the principles of Dravya Shakti and Kriya Shakti, one has to adopt the process of devotional service of the Lord by adoption of the principles of Karma Yoga, mentioned in Bhagavad Gita 9.27 as follows. Yat karochi yad as... Yat karosi yad as nasi yad juhosi dadasi yat. Yat tapas yasi kanteya tat kurusva mad arpanam. O son of Kunti, all that you do, all that you eat, all that you offer and give away, as well as all austerities that you may perform, should be done as an offering unto me. Text 25. Tamas tada pi buta der, pi kurvanad abhunabha, tasya matra guna sabdo, lingam yadrastra drishayo. From the darkness of false ego, the first of the five elements, namely the sky, is generated. Its subtle form is the quality of sound, exactly as the seer is in relationship with the scene. 
The five elements, namely sky, air, fire, water, and earth, are all but different qualities of the darkness of false ego. This means that the false ego in the sum total form of Mahatattva is generated uh, from the marginal potency of the Lord. And due to this false ego of lording it over material creation, ingredients are generated for the false enjoyment of the living being. The living being is practically the dominating factor over the material elements as the enjoyer, though the background is the Supreme Lord. Factually, save and accept the Lord, no one can be called the enjoyer, but the living entity falsely desires to become the enjoyer. This is the origin of the false ego. When the bewildered living being desires this, the shadow elements are generated by the will of the Lord and the living entities are allowed to run after them as, uh, as after a phantasmagoria. It is said that the first of the Tanmatra sound is created and then sky. And in this verse, it is confirmed that actually it is so. But sound is the subtle form of the sky. And the distinction is like that between the seer and the seen. The sound, the sound is the representation of the actual object. As the sound produced speaking of the object gives an idea of the description of the object. Therefore, sound is the subtle characteristic of the object. Similarly, sound representation of the Lord in terms of his characteristics is the complete form of the Lord, as was seen by Vasudeva and Maharaj Dasarathi, the fathers of Lord Krishna and Lord Rama. The sound representation of the Lord is non different from the Lord himself because the Lord and his representation and sound are absolute knowledge. Lord Chaitanya has instructed us that in the holy name of the Lord, as sound representation of the Lord, all the potencies of the Lord are invested. Thus, one can immediately enjoy the association of the Lord by the pure vibration of the sound representation of his holy name. And the concept of the Lord is immediately manifested before the pure devotee. The pure devotee, therefore, is not aloof from the Lord even for a moment. The holy name of the Lord, as recommended in the Shastras, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare may therefore be constantly chanted by the devotees, aspiring to be constantly in touch with the Supreme Lord. One who is thus able to associate with the Lord is sure to be delivered from the darkness of the created world, which is a product of false ego, tamasi ma jyotir gaman. Text 26 through 29. Nabhaso ta vikur banad, abuts parsha gunanila, Paranvatyach Shabdavamscha Pranauja Sahobalam Vayorapi Vikurvanat Kala Karmas Fabhavata Udapadhyata Tejovai Upavats Parsha Sabdavat Tejas to Vikur Tejasas to Vikurvanad Asidambora Satmakam Rupavats pars vachambo, Gosavatscha paranvayat, Visheshas tu vikurvanad, Ambaso gandavan abut, Paranvayad rasas parsha, Shabdarupa gunanvita. Because the sky is transformed, the air is generated with the quality of touch. And by previous succession, the air is also full of sound and the basic principles of duration of life, sense perception, mental power, and bodily strength. When the air is transformed in course of time and nature's course, fire is generated, taking shape with the sense of touch and sound. Since fire is also transformed, there is a manifestation of water full of juice and taste. As previously, it also has form and touch and is also full of sound. And water being transformed from all variegatedness on earth appears odorous and as previously becomes qualitatively full of juice, touch, sound, form, uh, and form respectively. 
purport. The whole process of creation is an act of gradual evolution and development from one element to another, reaching up to the variegatedness of earth as so many trees, plants, mountains, rivers, reptiles, birds, animals, and varieties of human beings. The quality of sense perception is also evolutionary, namely generated from sound, then touch, and from touch to form. Taste and odor are also generated along with the gradual development of sky, air, fire, water, and earth. They are all mutually the cause and effect of one another, but the original cause is the Lord himself in plenary portion. As Mahavishnu lying in the causal water of the Mahatattva. As such, Lord Krishna is described in Brahma Samhita as the cause of all causes, and this is confirmed in Bhagavad Gita 10.8 as follows Aham, Aham Sarvasya Prabhavo, Mata Sarvam Pravartate, Eti Matva Bajante Mam Buddha Bhava Samanditaha. The qualities of sense perception are fully represented in the earth, and they are manifested in other elements to a lesser extent. In the sky, there is sound only, whereas in the air, there are sound and touch. In the fire, there are sound, touch, and shape. In the water, there is taste also, along with the other perceptions, namely sound, touch, and shape. In the earth, however, there are all the above mentioned qualities with an extra development of odor also. Therefore, on the earth, there is a full display of variegatedness of life, which is originally started with the basic principle of air. Diseases of the body take place due to derangement of air within the earthly body of the living beings. Mental diseases result from the special derangement of the air within the body. And as such, yogic exercise is especially beneficial to keep the air in order so that diseases of the body become almost nil by such exercises. When they are properly done, the duration of life also increases and one can have control over death also by such practices. A perfect yogi can have command over death and quit the body at the right moment when he is competent to transfer himself to a suitable planet. The bhakti yoga, however, surpasses all the yogis because by dint of his devotional service, he is promoted to the region beyond the material sky and is placed in one of the planets in the spiritual sky by the supreme will of the Lord, the controller of everything. Text 30. Vaikari kanmano jagye Vaikari kanmano jagye Deva vaikari kadasa Digvatarka praceto svi Vanindro pendra mitraka. From the mode of goodness, the mind is generated and becomes manifest, as also the ten demigods controlling the bodily movements. Such demigods are known as the controller of directions, the controller of air, the sun god, the father of Daksha Prajapati, the Asvini Kumars, the fire god, the king of heaven, the worshipable deity in heaven the chief of the Adityas, and Brahmaji, the, Praj, uh, the Prajapati, all come into existence. Purport. Vaikarika is the neutral stage of creation, and Tejas is the initiative of creation, while Tamas is the full display of material creation under the spell of the darkness of ignorance. Manufacture of the necessities of life in factories and workshops excessively prominent in the age of Kali or in the age of the machine is the summit stage of the quality of darkness. Such manufacturing enterprises by human society are in the mode of darkness because factually there is no necessity for the commodities manufactured. Human society primarily requires food for subsistence, shelter for sleeping, defense for protection and commodities for satisfaction of the senses. The senses are a practical science of life, as will be explained in the next verse. Human civilization is meant for purifying the senses, and objects of sense satisfaction should be supplied as much as absolutely required, but not for aggravating artificial sensory needs. 
Food, shelter, defense, and sense gratification are all needs in material existence. Otherwise, in his pure, uncontaminated state of original life, the living entity has no such needs. The needs are therefore artificial, and in the pure state of life, there are no such needs. As such, increasing the artificial needs as is a standard of material civilization or advancing the economic development of human society is a sort of engagement in darkness without knowledge. By such engagement, human energy is spoiled because human energy is primarily meant for purifying senses in order to engage them in satisfying the senses of the Supreme Lord. The Supreme Lord, being the supreme possessor of spiritual senses, is the master of the senses, Rashikish. Rashika means the senses, and Isha means the master. The Lord is not the servant of the senses, or in other words, he is not directed by the dictation of the senses, but the conditioned souls or the individual living entities are servants of the senses. They are conducted by the direction or dictation of the senses, and therefore material civilization is a kind of engagement in sense gratification only. The standard of human civilization should be to cure the disease of sense gratification, and when and one can do this simply by becoming an agent for satisfying the spiritual senses of the Lord. The senses are never to be stopped in their engagements, but one should purify them by engaging them in the pure service of sense gratification of the master of the senses. This is the instruction of the whole Bhagavad Gita. Arjuna wanted first, uh, first of all to satisfy his own senses by his decision not to fight with his kinsmen and friends. But Lord Sri Krishna taught him the Bhagavad Gita just to purify Arjuna's decision for sense gratification. Uh, therefore, Arjuna agreed to satisfy the senses of the Lord, and thus he fought the battle of Kurukshetra as the Lord desired. The Vedas instruct us to get out of the existence of darkness and go forward on the path of light, Tamasimha Jyotirgaman. The path of light is therefore to satisfy the senses of the Lord. Dis uh, misguided men or less intelligent men follow the path of self-realization without any attempt to satisfy the transcendental senses of the Lord by following the path shown by Arjuna and other devotees of the Lord. On the contrary, they artificially try to stop the activities of the senses uh, through the yoga system, or they deny the transcendental senses of the Lord, the jnana system. Uh, the devotees, however, are above yogis and jnanis because pure devotees do not deny the senses of the Lord. They want to satisfy the senses of the Lord. Only because of the darkness of ignorance do the yogis and jnanis deny the senses of the Lord and thus artificially try to control the activities of the diseased senses. In the diseased condition of the senses, there is too much engagement of the senses in increasing material needs. When one comes to see the disadvantage of aggravating the sense activities, one is called a jnani. And when one tries to stop the activities of the senses by the practice of yogic principles, he is called a yogi. But when one is fully aware of the transcendental senses of the Lord and tries to satisfy his senses, one is called a devotee of the Lord. The devotees of the Lord do not try to deny the senses of the Lord, nor do they artificially stop the actions of the senses. But they do voluntarily engage the purified senses in the service of the master of the senses, as was done by Arjuna, thereby easily attaining the perfection of satisfying the Lord the ultimate goal of all perfection. Thus ends our reading for today. We will continue from text 31 on Friday, hopefully. All glories to Om Vishnu Pad Paramahamsa Sri Pad Bhakti Madhava Puri Maharaj Ki Jai. Jai Srila Prabhupada Srila Guru Maharaj Srila Guru Dev Srila Acharya Dev Srila Shanta Maharaj Ki Jai. Jai, all glories to our Rupa Nuga Guru Varga Ki Jai. All glories to the assembled devotees, all glories to the worldwide devotees. Bhaktivrinda Ki Jai. Jai Navadvip Dam Ki Jai. Mayapur Dam Ki Jai. Nirshingapali Dam Ki Jai. Jagannath Pur Dam Ki Jai. Jagannath Baladev Subhadra Ju Ki Jai. Jai Vrindavan Dam Ki Jai. Giri Govardhan, Gupta Govardhan Dam Ki Jai. Shyam Kund Radha Kund Ki Jai. Tosi Devi Bhakti Devi Vrinda Devi Ki Jai. Nitai Gora Pramanandi.
श्री हरि हरि बो जाय श्रीमान भागवतम की जाय जाय प्रिंसटन भक्तिवेदांते इंस्टिट्यूट की जाय श्री चैतन्य सारस्वत इंस्टिट्यूट की जाय श्री चैतन्य सारस्वत मत की जाय तदिया शाखा मत की जाय हरे कृष्णा धन्यवाद प्रणाम